In this video we're going to look at some general real life applications of percent. So we'll do these six examples. Example one is test scores. Example two, family budget. Example three, chemistry with hydrogen peroxide. Example four, number of students. Example five, alcohol content in beer, or it could be anything, something like that. Example six, defective parts. Okay. So let's have a look at example one. <clears throat> an English student answered 72 questions correctly on a 90 question test. What percent of the questions did she answer correctly and what percent were answered incorrectly? Okay. So what you've got to do is, and by all means you can write, the, some students like to write this down. If you want to write the, these real life problems down, you know, it helps you to really understand what what this is all about. So by all means take your time write it down and press pause if you need to. And then we're going to try to figure out what what are we trying to do here? What 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 do we need to do to get the answer, okay? So if you've pressed pause and written it down if you want to and then at this point, right? We've got to figure out Okay, so you got 72 correct out of 90, and we'll just start with this question. What percent of the answers did she answer, of the questions did she answer correctly? We want to know 72 is what percent of 90, don't we? Or you could say um, I guess we're used to saying <coughs> what percent of 90 is 72. I guess we're used to seeing it this way. Or 72 is what percent of 90. Same type of thing, right? So um, we had a way of turning this guy into an equation. What percent we would put in a letter of multiply by 90 90 is equal sign and 72 72 so you have the percentage times 90 equals 72 or to get the p by itself what you need to do <coughs> p is multiplied by 90 so you need to divide by 90 on both sides right so the percentage is 72 over 90. Um, and like like I said, some of you guys like to just come up with this fraction right away. That's fine. 72 out of 90 is what you got. That's our score. What's that as a percentage? Well, you've got to turn this thing into a percentage, right? So we can go 90 into 72 and see what you get. 72.0, how about that? So 90 into 72 won't go, 90 into 720. Well, 8 nines is 72, so I'm going to guess 8. So 800, zero, zero, 8972, subtract, and we get remainder 0. And of course, this decimal point is here, so I need that decimal point, the answer up here. So I get 0 0.8. 0 0.8. What is that as a percentage? I've turned the fraction into a decimal. Now we get that as a percentage. You need to move the decimal point two spaces to the right, huh? And that becomes 80%. So she got 72 questions out of 90 correct. That is 80% or 80 per 100 if you want to think about it that way. So if there were 100 questions and she kept doing uh, guess or kept working at the same rate, she would have got 80 out of 100. Right. That's the same thing as kind of getting 80 out of 100, right? Okay. Um, now, the next question is what percent were answered incorrectly? Well, tell me. How are you going to figure that one out? What percent were answered incorrectly? 
Let me ask you this. How many questions were answered incorrectly? How many questions were answered incorrectly? Well, it was 90 on the test. What's 90 subtract 72? That's 18, right? So we're asking, basically, we want to know what percent of 90 is 18, right? We want to know what percent of 90 is 18. And you could turn that into an equation P times of means multiply 90 is 18 and divide both sides by 90 and the percentage is 18 over 90 and if you do the division you'll end up with um, if you do the division you'll end up with 0 0.2 which becomes skip the decimal point one two spaces to the right 20% Okay, so if you work it out, you'll get 20%, or you could have guessed that, because look, <clears throat> if you get 80% correct, that must mean that you must have 20% incorrect, right? Because you missed 20%. If you got 80% correct, then do you, and th these have to add to 100%, right? All the questions, right? So you could have just guessed that as it was without working anything out. Okay, example two, family budget. A family spends $750 every month on rent. Month. If the family's income each month is $2,000, what percent of the income is spent on rent? Okay, so by all means, you know, press pause and try it yourself or whatever and see what you come up with. But, or you can write this whole thing out again just to try and understand the problem better. If you write the, these things down, it'll help you understand what the problem is asking. <laughs> but uh, we want to know 750 is what percent of 2,000? I'm going to write that way just for fun. 750 is what percent of 2,000? We can do it that way if we like and then turn this into an equation. So 750, 750 is, how do you write is with math language? The word is equals, right? How about what percent? What percent? And then we've got to do of, and then we've got to do 2000, right? So what percent becomes what? Let's say P, right? Of of becomes multiplied by and 2000 2000 right so we have 750 is equals p times p times 2000 and if I want to get the p is the percent is what I need if I want to get the percent by itself I need to divide this side by 2,000, right? And if I do that, I must divide this side by 2,000 also. So I need to calculate 750 divided by 2,000. Now, instead of doing the long division right away, we might want to look at <coughs> maybe putting this in lowest terms, first of all, right? So you can cross the zeros off, at least, to, be, to begin with. So that's 75 over 200, right? Now, 25 goes into top and bottom, so does 5. Let's do 5 just to make it easier. 5 into 7 goes once, remainder 2. What's 5 into 25? 5 into 25 is 5 times, right? 5 into 20 goes 4 times. <coughs> 5 into 0 is 0 times. So we have 15 over 40. Now we can simplify that further, right? 5 into 15. 3 times, 5 into 40, 8 times, so we got 3 eighths. 
So the answer is so far p is three eighths. <coughs> so the rent is three eighths of the income. But we need to calculate this as a percentage, right? So the first thing we need to do is turn the fraction into a begins with D, turn the fraction into a decimal, right? So you've got to go eight into three and see what you get. Three point zero zero zero, right? Eight into thirty. Three times. The decimal point goes up here. Put a zero here, right? Three times eight, twenty-four. Subtract. Uh, thirty minus twenty-four, six. Bring a zero down. Eight into sixty. Eight eighths is sixty-four. So less than that would be seven. Let's try seven. Seven eighths, fifty-six. That'll work, right? Sixty minus fifty-six, four. Bring down another zero. What's eight into forty? Five times. Five eighths is forty. Subtract. Remainder zero, right? Remainder zero. So we get zero point three seven five. So the rent is three zero point three seven five of the income. And we have to turn that into a percentage. How do you turn a decimal into a percentage? So we have the percent, the amount. It's it's three. It, it's seven fifty over two thousand, which became three eighths, which became zero point three seven five. Now we have to turn that decimal into a percent. How do you do that? Just move the decimal point one two spaces to the right. Thirty seven point five per hundred percent, right? So the rent is 37.5 percent of the total income, okay? Yeah, and you know, they usually advise that your rent be no more than 25 percent of your income, or one quarter. Anything more than that is a bad idea. So anyway, you need a smaller house or a bigger income there, it seems. Okay. Example three, hydrogen peroxide. Have you ever seen a hydrogen peroxide bottle? Well, here it is there, hydrogen peroxide. If you look closely, it might say, usually it'll say about 3% on it. See that? 3% hydrogen peroxide in the bottle. Okay? It is a, it is a, oh, I guess, why, why did I do 36? Sorry, this this is a 32 ounce. Sorry, not 36. 32 ounce, 32 ounce bottle. Okay, we've got 32 fluid ounces here. See that? 32 fluid ounces. Okay, so how much pure hydrogen peroxide is in this 32 ounce bottle that is marked 3% H2O2 hydrogen peroxide? Okay. So what do I need to do? And what does this mean? This basically means that, um, and if you look at it, active ingredient hydrogen peroxide 3% and inactive ingredient purified water. What this means is we have 3% hydrogen peroxide, I, sorry, hydrogen peroxide and we have 97 percent water that's what's in this bottle you're buying water mostly what a waste of money huh yeah maybe we should buy pure and then mix it or something like that anyway but you're buying three percent hydrogen peroxide 97 percent water right now so and this is 32 fluid ounces so the question is how how many ounces of this is the pure hydrogen peroxide. So in other words, if I just wanted to make this bottle, and if I had pure hydrogen peroxide, how much pure hydrogen peroxide would I put in here and then fill it up with water to get the same uh, concentration, right? So what I want to know is how much is 3% of 
32 ounces, right? I want to figure out 3% of 32 ounces. So go ahead and figure that, figure that out. <coughs> So 3%, first of all, you should write that as a decimal. Turn 3% into a decimal. The decimal point is here. Move it one, two spaces to the left. And we get 0 0.03, or 0 0.03. What does of mean? Of means multiply, right? Multiply by 32, right? So 0 0.03 times 32. Multiply that and see what you get. 3 twos is 6, 3 threes is 9, and then 0 times that we get a whole bunch of zeros. Let's not bother with that. We have one, two decimal places in the question, so we're going to have one, two decimal places in the answer. So 0.96 or 0 0.96. So this becomes 0 0.96. So the answer is 0 0.96 ounces of pure hydrogen peroxide is contained in this bottle. Okay? And so almost one ounce. So basically if you, if you took one ounce of pure hydrogen peroxide, put it in the bottle, and then fill it up with water, you would have the same concentration level. Right? Now, I want to ask you this and see if you can give me the answer here. How many ounces of water is in the bottle. If there's 0 0.96 ounces of hydrogen peroxide, how many ounces of water is in there? What would you do? Would you go take the total amount, 32, and subtract 0 0.96, right? 32.00 subtract 0 0.96 does that make sense? that would give you the 97 percent amount of water right? so subtracting turn this into a 1 and bring the 1 over here that becomes 10 but I need something over here so that becomes 9 and that becomes 10 10 minus 6 is 4 9 minus 9 is 0 1 minus 0 is 1 this is 3 decimal point goes here so we have 31.04 ounces of water in the bottle, right? Let's have a look at this one. A bottle of beer is 5% alcohol. If the bottle is found to contain 0 0.6 ounces of pure alcohol, how many ounces total does the bottle contain? Press pause and see if you can figure this one out. Okay, <clears throat> so here's the bottle of beer. I'm not going to show you what's written on it, so you don't know how big it is. Well, you might guess. <clears throat> but this is what we have to figure out. You know the beer contains 5% alcohol. You know that the 5% alcohol is 0 0.6 ounces of the total amount of liquid in the drink. Okay? So, what, what we're trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, look, here's the bottle of beer, right? Here it is. Um, and if we, if we kind of draw it here, like... Basically, if, if you were... Basically, imagine that this amount down here is pure alcohol, okay? which is 5% of the total amount which is um, also 0 0.6 ounces okay so how many ounces in the total what is the total amount of ounces is the question what's the total amount of ounces so how can we set up an equation or set up some way to solve this any idea Well, you might think 
of what we practiced earlier. 5% of what number or how many ounces? 5% of what is 0 0.6 ounces? I mean that's what we're trying to figure out, right? If I took 5% of the total if I took 5% of the total amount in the bottle, I would get 0 0.6 ounces. So the it's it's a so the question is 5% of what is going to give me 0 0.6 ounces, right? Or what number? So we'll turn this sentence into an equation and then see what we come up with. So write 5% as a decimal first of all. 5% as a decimal is Now the decimal point is here, so move it one, two spaces to the left and stick in a zero, right? So point zero five or zero point zero five of multiply of means multiply of what? How do, or what number? Why do you turn that into something? What do we have that be? How about n? that's the missing number, right? is equals and 0 0.6 0 0.6 okay so I have 0 0.5 percent of what is 0 0.6 and then just solve that by all means press pause and solve it from here if you want okay I'm, I'm going to do it now slowly I guess Let's give you a chance so n has been multiplied by this, so I need to divide it by that, don't I? To get n by itself. That's what we learned with the equation section. And 0 0.05s cross cancel, I end up with n equals this over this. So I need to go um, 0 0.05 into 0 0.6. But I can't divide a decimal into something. So I need to move the decimal point two spaces over so that this becomes a whole number five into something. But of course I need to divide to put this guy one two spaces over, which will give me a placeholder zero and turn this number into sixty. Now what's five into sixty? Well five into six goes once, remainder one, five into ten goes twice. So n equals 1, 2. What does n represent? 5% of what is 0 0.6? A bottle of beer is 5% alcohol. If the bottle is found to contain 0 0.6 ounces of pure alcohol, how many ounces does the bottle contain? How many ounces? The answer is 12 ounces. And yes, indeed, it is a. If you look really closely anyway 12 ounce bottle of beer well you might know that already anyway okay let's have a look at this example example 6 defective parts in a shipment of car parts 2% are known to be defective if 8 parts are found to be defective how many parts are in the shipment interesting please press pause and try to figure this out yourself and um, even if you don't figure it out, that doesn't matter. It's still worth trying to think about it now and then taking notes on the video because it'll help you. Then it'll you'll have made hopefully you'll have an aha moment. You'll be like, ah now I see. But if you just follow take notes in the video and just try to remember what was done, you know, it's it's better to, to struggle with it at least a little bit and then and then watch the video okay so please press pause and struggle with it then I'll walk through it slowly okay okay and even if you wrote if, if you haven't done if you're still uh, haven't figured it out I would suggest writing this whole thing out writing this whole thing out okay so have you written it out press pause and write it out and try it again press pause write it out and try it try it again okay Okay, so I hope you've given it your best shot, you've written it out, you've tried it, and you may not have figured it out, that's okay. But at least you've tried it, and that's important 
to give your brain that chance to think about it. Okay, so a shipment of car parts, 2% are known to be defective. And look at this sentence. If eight parts are found to be defective, how many parts are in the shipment? So isn't that weird? What we have is a box of parts, okay? There are some of these parts are defective. Not all of them. Most of them are not, of course. Defective parts represent 2% of the total amount, which is not very many. Or 8 parts, okay? The number 8. Um, non defective parts, parts that work, represent the majority, of course. The working parts or non defective or functional would be 98%, right? Because 2% are defective, might be 8% or not, and we don't know what that number is, what the 98% is, right? Anyway, what I'm trying to do is get you to think about it, to understand that, look, 2% of what total number is 8? I mean, that's what we're trying to figure out. 2% of what number, basically, is 8. That's what we're trying to figure out. Right? Because the 2% is the 8 parts. That is the 2%. And so what's, what's uh, we've got to figure out, well, uh, we, we want the, the total, not just the working amount, but we want actually the, the total amount, right? Sorry, a little bit confusing. Sorry. 2 percent of what number is 8? So turn 2 percent into a decimal. What do you get? As a decimal, the decimal point needs to go one, two spaces to the right. So we'll get 0 0.02 or 0 0.02. Okay. And again, 2 percent, remember, is 2 per 100. 2 over 100. 2 hundredths is 0 0.02. Of means multiply, so we've got to multiply by what number? How can you represent that? N, right, is 8, is equals 8, 8. So I have 0 0.02 times N equals 8. How do I solve that equation? Undo multiplying by 0 0.02. How do you undo that? You gotta divide by 0 0.02 on both sides, right? So these guys cross cancel. I end up with n equals 8 over 0 0.02. Now, I want to figure this out, so I need to go ahead and divide that. So I need to go 0 0.02 into 8 but I can't divide a decimal into something, so I must turn that into a whole number, which means the decimal point needs to stop over here, making that a 2, and of course this decimal point needs to go one, two spaces over, so I'll put in two zeros for a placeholder, so it's 2 into 800, what does that give? 2 into 8 goes 4 times, 2 into 0 goes 0 times, 2 into 0 goes 0 times, n equals 400 interesting so we we asked two percent of what number is eight and we found that the what number n is four hundred so we figured out the two percent of four hundred is eight so the question was how many parts are in the shipment four hundred parts so the total amount of parts is four hundred Okay. So the, the total parts is uh, 400 parts, of which 8 are defective. And just as an aside, in case you're ever asked something like this, just so we understand, the working amount of parts then would be 98%, right, because they add to 100. And the amount of parts that work would be 392, because 392 and 8 makes the 400. But that's just uh, just for fun. But this is what we needed was 400 parts are in the shipment. Okay.